Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Fate Sworn with me, Bring It On. So exploring Crown Hold properly. Come on in. I read Buckley. Take your time, peruse the selection. We at the Big Hunt pride ourselves on the freshest, most delicious foods in the city. We also offer a variety of other goods and supplies, but our specialty is food for the more discerning customer. Uh, crown hold. Nothing has been the same since Telogris marched in the town. I know he fashions himself a liberator, but we're not fools. Chaos can chain you just as well as order can. Instead of surrendering to fate, you surrender to a psychotic god. Where's the upside? Reed Buckley. I've always appreciated the finer things in life. Mithros may be savage, but Crownhold is a city of elegance and history. I come from a long line of butchers, but I craved a vocation with a bit more flavor. What kind of food? I call them select cots. Venison from the rarest, juiciest beasts in the forest. My high-paying customers tend to have a refined palate. I pay top dollar for most wild fey meat, and flesh with a bit of a magical kick. Partners, 50-50. You know where to find me. Alright, do I even know what I need to do for this quest? Okay, so it's just, it's a task. Not nearly as worried about it then. This doesn't look very good. Uh, there's a human skull in there. Well, may not be human. It looks human. I have to report that guy. <laughs> How many times must I tell you? I have not seen the beast. But let me warn you. The preordained will never succeed in dominating the will of nature. If the wild fay must feed, they must feed. I do not care what your chaos lord demands. You will not stop the migrations. And you will not find peaches. <laughs> okay. Uh, Telogris. He and his preordained thugs arrived nearly a year ago. They entered the city under arms and banners. The trusting Matharans didn't have a chance. And the city surrendered in a matter of hours. Peaches. He was only a pup when I found him beneath a blooming blood root. Small, injured, needy. I nursed him back to health, and we formed a bond. It broke my heart to release him back into the wild. But it was the right thing to do. Alright, so I'm still not entirely clear if the Matharans are human, or even a humanoid race. Like, have we run across a Matharan? We've come across Matharan descendants, I think the people that own the antelope farm uh, at ATT something. At Wald? They said they were descendants of Matharans. But I don't think we've actually met a Matharan yet. I have no idea if they are human or what, what they're supposed to be. Uh, Jorah Tam. In the beginning, I was sent by the Domus Political as an agent. They wished to assess the threat posed by the Mitharans, but the people here accepted me with open arms, and I soon made Crownhold my home. I am more Mitharan than Gnome now. Crownhold. It is a relic of another age, a kingdom trapped in time. Its people are a direct link to the early civilizations of the West, but Elogris has corrupted the city and all of Mithros. His chaos magic disrupts everything it touches. Who is Peaches? Wait. 
Oh no, you're not from the court of Telogris. I should have noticed that straight away. I do apologize. Peaches. Oh well, he is a Cliff Bar guest, a friend. I rescued him many years ago when he was a pup. I guess you could say we formed a bond. I fear for his safety. Is the preordained have been ordered to clear the woods near the city? They relish a good hunt. Peaches and I have not seen each other for years. But I would hate for him to get caught in this culling. Would you be willing to help me locate his den? I would see to it that you're compensated. Now why the preordained clearing the woods? Chaos magic has intensified across Mithros, causing disorder in the natural world. The wild fey are restless and angry. Telogris hopes to eliminate the threat. He has sent his minions to kill any magical creatures that may rise up. I'll help you find Peaches. I had a feeling you might. An experienced tracker is needed to locate Peaches' current den, and I'm not qualified. You'll know him by his limp, and he has a stripe of white along his spine. Once you find him, I'll come to remove him from the forest. Hopefully I can find a new home for him elsewhere in Mithros. Hurry back! Okay, we have it over there yet. Good to know. Merchant, citizen, merchant. Chest back here. Clear the area. Oh, I almost made it. Careful. We're still cleaning up the scene. It's a murder. City girl. Didn't have a chance. I have a headhunter head. Why don't you wait until you have all of them? You might not make it that long, especially if Cinder is after you. Uh, who was killed? Her name was Nettie Blevins. She was the daughter of a high-born Mithoran lord. I'm going to have my hands full. They already took the body inside to the dock. All that's left is to find the killer and clean up the blood. Back to work. Okay, so maybe they are humanoid because she was friends with What's-His-Face. They didn't make a fuss about it, so I, I don't know. The other, the other murder victim is who she was friends with. Go back here. I see a chest on the map. There it is. Oh, come on. It's like right there. Paying any attention. Doctor, I'll talk to you first. Welcome to my forge. Herbart Ham. Welcome to the Steely Craftsman. You carry an impressive collection with you. The armor, the gear, the weapons, all of it of the finest quality. We will be honored to have your patronage. Uh, blacksmithing. I make a good living, which is important since I refuse my inheritance. I opened the Steely Craftsman when I was 16. Used money I'd earned forging swords for the garrison. Gerbart Ham. You'd be surprised. I come from a very rich, very influential crown hold family. I grew up with a servant following me around to wash my hands when they got dirty. Can you believe that? So the mountain is an old hammer, right? Sure, that's one of the starting weapons. Uh, the card of the mountain indicates a fate that will occur slowly and quietly. The fate weavers explain that those who are fated with the card of the mountain may sometimes not notice the change until it has already moved through them. Flame. 
Flame is a beacon standing tall above others. Those of the flame draw the fates of others into their lives, for the better or for the worse. The card of the flame indicates one whose fate is bound to those around them. The field. The field presents an open possibility. This is a card that rarely appears to most seeking the wisdom of the fate weavers. It indicates that there is a choice to be made and that the outcome of the reading reflects only one branch of that choice. The forge. The forge is an instrument of change and its card reflects that. Those fated with the forge bring about change or are, the, or are themselves changed in sudden and often wide-reaching events. In the song. The song is often thought to be a card of hope and encouragement. In truth, most fate weavers read this card for what it is, an indication that those fated of the song will live a memorable, beautiful, and short life. Come back anytime. The only one I remember is the mountain, but the mountain was definitely one of the starting items from the chest in Gorehart. the building down, on to the next. Enemies over there. There is uh, crawling, crawling with them. Stone Veil. Body in here is just the chest and crafting thing. Really need to slow it down a bit. Turn it through way too many lockpicks. bigger than I thought it was. Somehow a ton of people to talk Stay to. Out of trouble. At least on like an individual basis. A lot of buildings to explore though. Clovis Fabian. Greetings, and welcome to the King's Thimble. I am Clovis Fabian, Fabian, attendant and proprietor at your service. May I assume that you're here for a new outfit? Because what you're wearing is, well, it's rather ridiculous. Honestly, have you seen yourself? 
Whatever this is, is not working. Now let's see what you got. The moon. This fate of the moon casts light into the darkness, revealing the truths that most are afraid to face. Full on running man set. Ooh, the tower. The tower encourages the fated to gain a new perspective on their lives. This card often links to other cards, indicating to the fate weaver that the reading may not be as it seems on the surface. Clovis Fabian, or Fabian. I am the latest in a long celebrated line of Mitharan tailors. We Fabians have served the royal family for generations. Now I must serve Telogris, the Chaos King. It is my greatest pleasure. Groundhold. If only you could have seen us at the height of our glory, before all the recent unpleasantness. Our ancient ancestors lived alongside the Arathi themselves, gods and mortals side by side. Until the Arathi left, they must have thought they could do better. Logris. I would rather not discuss politics, if you don't mind. The Chaos King has agents in every shadow and whisper. Trust no one. Okay, Chaos Critters. You've seen them, have you? Well, be careful. They'll take a finger if you're not careful. Maybe a whole hand. Listen, I've had to take a few liberties with my inventory to survive in these difficult times. I've had to bend a few rules. Those Niskaru, the critters, they leave behind a unique material, a kind of silk. Its colors are incredible, and it's nearly unbreakable. If you ever find yourself in possession of this silk, bring it by the shop. I'll make it worth your trouble. All right, another task. Plenty of busy work in this expansion. Some of them far more lucrative than others. Like the preordained amulets. Which I don't know how lucrative these other ones are because I haven't started them yet. Alright, so this looks like a quest location. We'll come back here later, I'm sure. Alright, could go down this way. I'll hold off on that for now. Right, we'll get to the good humors next. Alright, maybe we'll go up this way, then work our way down and around. Do that instead. Organize our exploration a little bit. Is this a person? Alright, he can repair my stuff for me. Wind's kicking up today. Or she. It's going to be stormy for a bit. <laughs> repair my stuff. Care if it's stormy. Let's do the guardhouse first where we speak to these people. Keep you. I'd give you a proper welcome. But the city hasn't been very welcoming lately. I'm Captain Coach, leader of the Crownhold's garrison. Normally, I'd be wishing you all the best in our wine and pleasure halls. But all a Crownhold has ground to a halt during the occupation. Roads in and out of town are blocked, strangling supply lines. Atologris. He is the antithesis of everything we cherish in Crownhold. We have spent generations building a great culture. And he seeks to bring it all tumbling down in a matter of months. Preordained. They hold all of Crownhold in their grip, congregating around the Temple of Order in the city's center. But they are a sloppy, angry lot. No proper training, no clear objectives. Telogros is all that unites them. Groundhold. It is a city under endless siege. The preordained wish to control the people, but they have no wish to protect or care for them. That leaves the rest of us, the collaborators, to keep our citizens' best interests in mind. But every day it grows more difficult. 
Captain Coach. I was brought up under the tutelage of the martial masters, a warrior sect steeped in discipline and spiritual meditation. We embody Mitharu's teachings, seeking order in the chaos of battle. I've only been a captain for a few weeks. They executed the old captain when he failed to follow orders. What's blocking supply shipments? Funny you should ask. It's our own men and women blocking movement along the mountain road. Deserters. They left the army when Telogris occupied the city. Now they've set up blockades to keep the preordained from receiving resupply. Only, it's not only the preordained to use these goods. All a crown hold suffers. Innocent families, elders and children. Something must be done. But I don't have the heart to face my own soldiers on the battlefield. Why are they deprive their own people? It's not intentional. They're trying to prevent the preordained from getting what they need, but it's not working. Instead, the citizens of Crownhold are being robbed of food, medicine, and items for basic survival. I move the barricades for a price. I have the coin, but not the manpower. So if you're truly interested, I won't hold you back. The deserters built their barricades along Crow Peak to the west. Be careful. You will face harsh resistance. They are strong fighters. I trained them myself. They haven't met my hammer yet, so I don't think they're going to be that tough. Uh, what quest is this? Health is maxed out, so eventually they should stop seeing me, right? We have to come here at night time. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I mean, now's probably not a great time to do this quest anyway. Let's finish talking to everybody. We'll do this later. The Salty Salmon Inn. What name? I'm a big fan of alliteration, in case you couldn't tell. Could I have more exciting episode titles? Absolutely. Sometimes I, uh, I settle on the name so I can have better alliteration. <laughs> That's a fun little challenge. That must be the salmon. I want to talk to it here. Hello there. Huh. Not that surprising for an inn or tavern. I assume we'll be back there Stay later for a the trouble. quest. So I sneak into there. Another quest to sneak. I'd like to go in there if I. Well. If I to sneak in there, I assume we can't talk to the guy that lives there. There's no reason to go in there quite yet. Prison, guardhouse, another estate, a great library. Next, we'll save good humors for last. I read Pepper Quarters. We'll go there in the next episode, I think. So we have to fight our way there. <laughs> Blacksmithing forge here. Some chests. Junk.
Man, that's pretty good. I'm not going to swap it out yet, but I might hold on to that. And it's the highest damage bonus that I've seen. A 60%. It's not limited to just physical either, I think. Wasn't it just general? Yeah, just 66 damage. Hello there. to the great library. Well, we're gonna go there anyway. I may as well take that path, I, I guess. Since we're here. Close to leveling up. We must reach the new max level because, for whatever reason, this expansion gives you just a ton of experience. I guess they don't want to risk people not hitting level 50. Sidetracked. Still a few more buildings I want to go through this episode. Let's see. Let me cast. You can see what I'm doing. Don't need to anyway. Just start swinging. Alright, let's junk. little corner. Lots of stealing. I assume we're gonna meet somebody down there later. This feels like a quest area. I assume there's not a lot of people to talk to in the Great Library. But we have to head there anyway, just to be sure.
safe. Alright, let's like knock out well stay out of trouble. It's gonna do this. Chapter 7, Magna Cortis. Unbeknownst to High Priestess Graf, she had been summoned, but not by the Arathi. The highest peak of the Eldrith, the mighty Magna Cortis, had tempted the adept, luring those special few who had been touched by the cyclical song of magic. These hallowed hills, these ancient canyons, here, in the snow, the world of mortals and the world of gods lay together in a tender embrace. They've rotted away this library long. I just want to talk, that's fine. There is more out there. Uh, Jorah Tam was also here. Where'd she go? I would check the hills and forests surrounding the city. I spot him from time to time, so he can't have gone far. Hurry back! I figured everything new to say. Outlander. Chest back here. I assume that's for a quest. Looks like that may take us through the sewers that we just went through. <laughs> Pretty building. I don't really hey. like the stone contrasting with the wood. Not how I would have handled it. But the wood, I guess, matches the aesthetic of the, the town. Strangers everywhere. Hi there. It's all wrong. <laughs> well, out of practice. I don't think anybody can see me. And probably not what we want to be doing right now. We do want to be talking to people. So I think we only have the good humors left to do anyway, so we, we've got time. The other buildings are blocked by quests or blocked by vagabonds. So this guy looks like a thief. Who we might meet in that sewer later. That's a similar vibe. Get to the Great Library as well. Oh, is this where we jump down? It is. Cool. Nope, wrong way. All right, let's go to Good Humor, speak to the doctor, and then we'll probably call it an episode there. In the next one, we have a few quests to start in Crownhold itself. Good to see you. So we have two buildings over here where all these vagabonds are defending. I mean, I'll head over here. It looks like it might be part of this city. But again, maybe not. Probably clear out this side first. There might be more city up here as well. Uh, but this is looks like the bulk of it. Please, tell me of your troubles. Come in! It is nice to see someone who is not with the preordained. May I help you? 
healing. These mountains radiate immense power, which can be harnessed by a trained practitioner. I put this energy to work for the people of Crownold. There are always ills to be treated, pain to be soothed. Sky Sinclair. I am a member of the Order of Mitharu. Unofficial, of course. I was inspired by the trailblazing sister Zelda of Dyden Hill. Oh, we helped her with her quest. Mitharu, uh, keep you safe. And Gorhart, I think. She's the female that wanted to be part of the. The monastery there? Alright, I'm gonna call it here. In the next episode, we'll clear out the western part of Crownhold. Uh, since there's combat over here, we still have a couple more buildings to go in. Red Pepper and Black Pepper quarters. And then we'll probably go east, grab this, uh, clear out this little area. And we have a few quests to do. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.